What's up guys? Right now I'm standing at, at the entrance of our master bathroom and we're going to use a pocket door for this entrance. Uh, I've just finished installing a, another pocket door over at the other bathroom and it went really well. Uh, the whole purpose of us using pocket doors in our bathrooms is, is mostly just a space saver. So you're not turning the bathroom door into the bathtub or into the vanity. Uh, our bathrooms in this house are not the biggest. Uh, so being able to save every ounce of space is awesome. So these pocket doors are going to slide. This one, for example, is going to slide from the edge of the tub over into this wall. And there might be some of it going into the master closet, but that's all right too, because we kind of wanted to do a little bit of cabinets and shelving in there on that wall anyways. But I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of the one I just installed and then kind of show you step by step on how I uh, install these pocket doors. The brand I'm using is a Johnson brand uh, and it seems like it's really solid. These are the soft close and open. You can get them in all different sizes. We're using 36 inch doors on all of our uh, bedrooms and bathrooms. But you can cut them down to whatever size door you want. These ones came ready to go at 36 inches but they give you marks if you want to do a 34, 32, or 28 inch door on where you need to cut them down. But I'll give you that quick walkthrough of the other one and then I'll show you uh, how I get started with this process. So right here is that bathroom number two and I've got the opening for the door on the right side here. That tub is not where it actually goes, it's just sitting in there to get out of the way. And then I fasten those uh, steel beams or aluminum beams into the concrete with some Tapcon screws and then they screw into that top rail with just some threaded coarse thread wood screws and you frame it out just like you would any door or any opening kind of show you how it looks here uh, we got our king stud here that goes all the way up to the ceiling and then we got our jack stud right here that just supports our header now the height of these studs over here the king stud is 84 and a half inches. You need to make them a little bit taller than your standard opening because they want you to have room for this separate header for the sliding door with a little bit of room on top. And then the width of this opening where the door is actually going to be right here is your door size times two plus one inch. So I'm using a 36 inch door you take that times two plus one inch and we're at that 73 inch mark for our entire rough opening. Once you get your rough opening all framed up, there's a spot for a screw right here. See if that will focus a little bit better. There we go. So that screw in the middle there, uh, you put those in at a measured height and then you put one in on the other side and then you can slide that little opening onto it and it'll kind of hold it steady while you level everything and then you drive in two other nails. That door went in really well this morning and I'm gonna start the second one. Uh, of course, uh, my house has been a little bit trickier than, than a normal one would be with vaulted ceilings, but if you just have a straight framed uh, house, this would be a piece of cake. The very first thing I'm gonna do over here is figure out exactly where I want my door to, when it's closed, where the door should sit uh, up against the wall, and then measure over uh, the opening, the rough opening, which I said earlier was two times the door plus one inch, uh, so 73 inches, and then make my mark. And this isn't gonna be like your typical framing where you build the wall and then lift it up. I'm gonna kind of stick frame it in, in, uh, in place, just because this vaulted ceiling is gonna give me a little bit of trouble if I tried to lift it up. Uh, by myself. So what I'm going to do is get my uh, king stud all the way up and then screw or nail my jack stud right to that and then do the other side and then mount my header and my header is going to kind of hold that rough opening in place while I build in a couple other studs here. Once I get these studs put in place over here up against the wall uh, I'll be able to fasten it firmly to the wall and then we should be good to go from there. But I'm going to get started on that rough opening. Uh, I'll get back to you guys once I have that all finished and I can kind of walk you through that a little bit more as well. All right guys, I just got my rough opening and my header all fastened in place. The next step 
is to mount that screw that I mentioned earlier that we're going to hook the actual pocket door bracket onto. And for this, you want to measure up 80 and three quarters of an inch from the floor. In my case, I've got concrete here, so I'm going to go right to the concrete and measure up 80 and three quarters. And then you find your center point from there. And then it's just as simple as driving in a screw and leaving it hang out about a quarter of an inch. And the reason we're leaving it hang out a little bit is so we can actually hook that little bracket onto there. I'll give you a little close up here. So here's my screw. It's centered and it's 80 and three quarters of an inch. If you look at it from the side, You'll see it sticking out about a quarter of an inch there. All right, so now I'm gonna take the header for the actual pocket door. And remember I said I'm doing 36 inch doors and this comes stock for a 36 inch door. But if you look closely, I don't know if these will show up on camera or not. They kind of do. It gives you different uh, lines to cut for if you have a different size door. But how this works, is you take this side that has the header on it and this is going to be where the actual opening is and then this part here with the aluminum uh, brackets on it this is going to be inside of the wall so i'm going to take this and just hook it onto my screws and then drop it into place and now i'm going to take a level and make sure everything's level it gives you about a half inch maybe three quarters of an inch of movement. So if you're off a little bit, if your header isn't perfectly level, uh, you can make a small adjustment and then I'm gonna tighten those screws and then I'm gonna add reinforcement nails, uh, four on each side. All right guys, I had to raise up this side over here just a little bit, about an eighth of an inch. Now everything's nice and level. I've got all my reinforcing nails uh, put in on both sides. And the next part is to put in the metal studs that go within the wall. And those are like a hollow. They're two parts and it allows the door to slide right in between the two of them. There's one bracket that you have to put on the bottom of them. And then the first one we're actually going to butt right up next to this header piece here and then screw it from both sides, level it and plumb it to the concrete and make little marks on the concrete. So you take two of the uh, metal struts here and make sure you have the sides with the holes punched in on them uh, facing the top and then also you want these uh, ridges facing the inside so it's nice and smooth on the outside. And then there's just this bracket right here. And these pieces just slide in the bottom of it. So I'm gonna pop this together real quick, and then I'll show you how I assemble it. All right, so you'll notice I've got these butted up tight against the header up here. And then, whoops, uh, there's three different screw holes at the top. And I'm just gonna put one at each edge to hold it from falling like it has been. And then I'm gonna put a level on it and then as soon as I get it nice and plumb, I'm gonna mark the holes where I'm gonna drill into the concrete, and then I'll remove those screws, drill the holes in the concrete, and then fasten these down to it. But you start with this one here. Once you get this one finished, you split the difference between this metal piece and the uh, jack stud over there, and then whatever the middle is, you center the next set on. So for a 36 inch door, there's two sets of uh, interior studs here. So I'm going to fasten this one quick and then mark the holes and then I'll show you where I'm going to put the next one and then we're pretty much going to be finished with the rough install of a pocket hole door. 
Uh, and then after that, there's just some mounting hardware that you screw into the top of your door and you hook it on from there. But overall, it's really not too bad of a project. If you have uh, flat ceilings, it'll be even easier. I battled uh, having to cut some angled uh, studs because my pitch in my interior of my house is on a 212 pitch. Uh, but if you got a flat ceiling, it's even easier. Uh, if I could do it, you can do it. As one other thing I forgot to mention here is you're going to want to draw a perfectly straight line that's right flush with your studs. That way when you're placing these interior studs, you know exactly where to line them up with. Uh, I just used a straight edge. If you got a partner, you can run a chalk line. But once I get this plumb, I'm just going to take a marker and then there's little holes on the inside here and I'm going to pre-drill my concrete and then run some Tapcon screws into the concrete. If you're doing this on like a wood subfloor, it's even easier yet. You just drive some screws right into that wooden subfloor. Uh, I've got concrete here, so I got to punch some holes and then get those tap tap con screws uh, put into place. So after pre-drilling those holes, I just sunk in two tap con screws in each bracket, and that makes a very sturdy base. Guys, so that does it for the rough installation of a pocket hole door. Uh, once I get the door slabs finished up, I'll mount those after we're done with sheetrock and everything. So I might do a follow-up video just to show you how to actually attach the door to the system. But there's a couple sliding brackets in here, and it's just a matter of screwing in a bracket onto the door itself and hooking it in here. And this is the soft close uh, bracket, so as I throw it, uh, to the side it kind of hits a wall about three inches away from the edge and then it closes softly but thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next episode